Are you able to see my presentation? Yeah. Okay, yes. So today we're going to talk about straight lines. Uh, we still need to plan what we're going to discuss the following week after this. Because, yeah, all my my schedule has changed um, because UNISA didn't publish all the previous recordings. And because you can't watch, I can't say go watch this recording because it's there. So I need to just make sure that I assist you with areas that you um, unsure of and that you're still struggling with. So by the end of the session today, think of an area that we can discuss the following week so that then I can prepare for that as well. Okay, so today we're talking about straight lines. Before we do that, do you have any questions for me? Or we can also even discuss the plans for next week here. Hi. <laughs> I would like you to discuss, ma'am, mm -hmm. finding X, solving X, finding X, looking for X, X, I need X, ma'am. You need to find X. Okay, yeah. so today we're also going to find X anyway because... I think if X is giving you a problem, <laughs> hey, we need to find the, that X. Okay, I will find also some of the um, exercises from solving the, um, X uh, from the previous sessions, and then we can see how we can help you uh, with that. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you, ma'am. Others? Are you good? So we can just um, work with today's session and then proceed from there. Okay. Okay. So since we're going to talk about straight lines, straight lines in terms of math or basic numeracy, we're always going to refer to them as also linear equation. You will see that we will draw any a, a straight line. And that straight line is represented by an equation. And we're going to learn about that. So by the end of the session today, you should learn how to draw a straight line on a set of x axis. In the exam, you are not going to be asked to draw a straight line, but you can be asked to identify which straight line corresponds with the information that they have given you. So you should be able to know how that straight line was drawn. Um, we need to determine the slope of a straight line as well as the equation of that straight line. So when we talk about the slope uh, and the straight line, so a straight line is just the line that you draw. Anyone knows what the straight line is. I don't have to explain what the straight line is. So, like, you just need two points, and those two points have coordinates within them. So, what I'm referring to is on a, uh, an axis or a set of axes, which we call a Cartesian plane, which is made up of the this arrow that goes up and the arrow that goes horizontal. So, these are called y axis and x axis you will see that at the bottom here we do have an x so the line that is horizontal we call it the x axis the line that is vertical we call it the y axis horizontal vertical yes we call it the y axis and if we have two points only two points and the two points have coordinate that corresponds with this y axis and the y and the sorry the y axis and the x axis we are able to plot that point and when we have the two points we can connect the two points for example if we need to find the slope of a line we are required to have two points so let's say we are given these two points here it says draw the straight line or the straight line graph that passes through these two points we are told that the point the points these are two points this is one point this is one point we are told that one point has the x coordinate 
and the Y coordinate because it has to correspond with the X axis and the Y axis. So the first point, which is X1 point and corresponds to the Y1 point because this is our point one, it has this coordinate one and four. So we go to the X axis, we go and state there is our one, we look for our y axis, where is 4, where they both meet. For some reason, my dots are not lined up correctly. There we go. So there is 1 and there is 4. They need to cross point. And that point that we draw there, it's called point 1. It has coordinate of x coordinate 1 and y coordinate of 4. The second point, they said it has X coordinate and our Y coordinate. So this we're going to call it point two and we will represent the X and the Y with the, with the subscript two. So this is our point two. So our point two has on the X axis four and on the Y axis two. So where they both meet, that is where our point is at. That is how you define your point. Now, these two points, they tell us something about the type of the line that we have. So when we join this point and that point, we just take a ruler and draw the points to join, or we draw the line to join these two points. And they are the two points they created the line. Now, when you look at this line, you need to be able to tell us whether this line is declining or does it go downwards or is it negative or is it positive? So it tells you so many things. So what does it mean? It means when the value of X increases, when our values of X are going up, the values of Y are going down. And therefore it means this slope of this line is what we call a descending slope or what we call a downhill slope, or we can also call it a negative slope. So let's assume that we have another Cartesian plane here and we have two points point there and a point here. If I draw a line that joins them, these points for our x axis, when they are increasing in terms of the x value, because you can see there is our x value and there is our x value. In terms of our y value, because that is our y value, so our y axis, when my x1 is low, my y1 is also low at that point. When my x2 is high at that point, my y is also high at that point. So therefore it means when the value of x is increasing, the value of y is also increasing. And this, we call it an ascending slope. And we can also call it a positive slope, or we can call it an upward slope. And that is how you can define the type of slopes you have. Just want to see if I've covered everything. So let's assume that there is another method where you have the Cartesian plane with your X value there and your Y value there. And there is the line. Looking at this line, you can see that this line is constant, right? This line is constant. When the value of X is at this point, the value of Y, if this was true, the value of Y will just be two. When the value of X increases from one to two, the value of, of Y will stay the same. Even when it goes to the negative side, 
when the value of x is negative one this side the value of y stays the same as positive two so if your slope looks like this for the straight line we say there is no change in the values of y as the values of x increases there is no change it's constant the value of y is constant and therefore we call this a um, it's not a negative it's not a positive it's not a down here it's just a constant um uh, slope as well so we can also have a scenario where it is y and x axis and you have a constant x value so when the values of y increases or decreases the values of x stays constant because it will be constant at that value there so you just need to know and remember the types of slopes that you can have And this the slope will be equals to zero whereas for the others for this uh first one the slope will be negative for this when you calculate the slope you will see later on we will be calculating the slope when you calculate the slope and we get a negative value you must know that that is a descending slope a negative slope and a down slope if you calculate the value of your slope and you get the answer in a positive manner then you know that this is an ascending slope a positive slope or an upward slope if your slope is zero and the slope is zero there is uh, a constant um x exists or y exists okay now <clears throat> how do we then calculate that slope to know in state of in state of drawing the graph we can find the slope because here we're looking at the slope by visualizing it, by seeing the pattern of the slope, and we can make a conclusion on that, right? Because we can see the line that it is increasing as the value of X increase, the values of Y increase. It is decreasing as the values of y X increase, the values of Y decrease. We can see that those two are constant. But we can also use the measures by also having the two points we can calculate what we call the slope and the slope is just the ratio of the change in the value of your y values to the change in the values of your x values so we're going to take your point one y value and your point two value and find the difference and also the point one value or x value and the point two x value and take the difference of the two. So how do we define it? The formula it's y two minus y one and x two minus x one. It is very very important to identify your points with the x one and y one. Like I did here, you can see that I've identified that this one is x y and this is y one. Always your first point has x and y coordinates so you cannot have x1 x2 as a point no it has to be x1 y1 x2 y2 they correspond with one another so let's look at an example of how we calculate the slope we will use also the other values that we have so for example if we are given here we are told that this line passes through the two point and the point is 0 and 10 and 5 and 0. So we need to be able to label the point. Let x1 and y1 be represented by the first point, which is 0 and 10. And x2 and y2 be represented by the second point, which is 5 and 0. So we calculate the slope y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So because I've already identified my x1 and y1 and x2 and y2, it makes it easy for me to come and substitute the values into the formula. So our y2, we're just going to take 0. Our y1, it's 10. 
because we identified them from there with that statement. X2 is 5. Y, oh, sorry, X1 is 0. So it will be 0 minus 10 divided by 5 minus 0. And minus 0 minus 10 is minus 10. 5 minus 0 is 5. You need to simplify this to the lowest form. 5 can divide into 10. It goes into 5 one times and it goes 2 times into 10. And the answer will be minus 2. And that is how we find the slope. Let's go find the slope of our data that we have here, the original data that we have. Just going to remove the ink and calculate the slope. We know that the formula for the slope is the slope is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So I need to go and label my points. My first point will be x1 and y1, x2 and y2. So now I can come and substitute into the formula. So my y2 is 2. My y1 minus 4 divided by my x2 is 4 minus my x1 is 1. 2 minus 4 is minus 2 divided by uh, 4 minus 1 is 3. And therefore, my slope is equal to negative 2 over 3. So my slope is negative 2 over 3, and you can see that that is a negative slope, as we saw with the graph, it also told us that this is a negative slope. So you are able to calculate the slope of that graph. This is your exercise. Find the slope of this straight line passing through these two points. And your formula is your the slope is equal to. Remember, the formula has a minus. The formula has the minus, so you must also take into consideration the negative that is on the data point. Okay. So you need to first identify what you are given. What is, yes, what is your X, X1 and Y1? I was y1? just going to ask if we could do this on our own quickly. Yeah, you need to do that on your own. So you need to identify what, because this is your exercise. What is your X1 and Y1? And what is your Y2, X2, Y2? Let me know when you are done.
Are you done or are you still busy? I'm done, but I think I'm wrong. <laughs> Why you think you are wrong? Okay. Uh, what is your your? How did you identify your point? So minus two and minus three. Minus you said, two and minus three over minus. No, I want you to identify the points first. Oh, okay. So y two is minus two and minus three. And x two is one. Minus minus two. Uh, okay, you not get. Yeah, so now I'm confused. No, wait, wait. Uh, okay. I wanted you to first X. identify the point by saying yes. this is x one, this is y one. Oh, sorry. Yes, and then x two, one is x two, and y is minus two. Yes, and then you can then come and substitute into the formula. Yeah. So it's so, the, yeah. So it's the minus two, minus minus three over one minus minus two. And there we I think I got excuse. Okay, so that will be minus two minus times minus is a plus. It's positive three. So I got that right. One yeah. plus two. Two. Yes. So what is that minus that? Minus two plus one is is a minus minus two plus one is what? But minus two plus one is one. It's one, and yeah. one plus two is three, and then it's a negative. No, oh, it's a positive. Yes. Okay. So I was almost right. Thank you. <laughs> I just got because I got the minus, but it's supposed to be the plus. So okay, this way I got confused. Okay, so if you have a Casio calculator, you can just do this on your Casio calculator. No. Um, and it will it will be so it means I must stop sharing and share my entire screen. Did you ladies get the same? Okay, so if you oh, have I mean, a Casio so calculator like this, yeah. that has a fraction button, you can just say you will use this minus because it's not the it's not the the basic operation is the minus of the value. So minus two minus, and you put that into bracket minus three, and close bracket, and then go down. And it will be one minus open bracket minus two close oh, bracket. Got it. And when you press equal, and that will give you the answer. So only for those who have a Casio calculator. I've got yes. mine, but I don't have that one. I'll look for it. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, then you will have to calculate manually like at that step by step so that you don't get anything wrong okay so now we're done with calculating this loop let's then look at how we find the equation of a straight line now before i get to finding the equation of a straight line because i'm going to discard and I'm going to stop sharing again because I want to go on to my Because we're going to work with equations, so you should be able to manipulate an equation. And I hope what I'm going mm. to share right now, you have already submitted your assignments. 
and there yep. wouldn't be any problems with this. Okay, so this was one of your assignments where they ask you to solve. Am I not sharing? Do you see my screen? For some reason. No, we don't yeah. see it. Oh, no, I, thought, I just saw the chat now. Yeah, it, we see it, it now. We see it now. OK, OK, so uh, because when we when we solve equations like the, the straight lines and all that, you need to be solving for something. You need to be able to be comfortable to say you know what you're doing. So let's look at this example where they ask you to solve for X for the following equation. And that is what you're going to be doing with when you find the equation of a straight line. You will need to solve for Y, which will be the subject of the formula. So now the first thing that you need to do is to remove or work with what we call bot mass, right? You remember the bot mass bracket exponent or expression divisional multiplication they've got the same priority we work from left to right addition and subtraction therefore it means brackets comes before division and multiplication and division and multiplication comes before uh, addition and subtraction when you have division and multiplication you work from left to right regardless of whether multiplication comes first you just work from left to right. When you have addition and subtraction in your sum, they start with an, a subtraction and then comes addition. You just work from left to right. They've got the same priorities. So let's look at this question. It says solve for x. 2x plus 2 is equal to 2 times 2 minus x into bracket plus 6. So the first thing we need to do is bracket so we need to get rid of the bracket so it will be 2x plus 2 is equals to multiply with the 2 we distribute 2 inside the bracket so it will be 2 times 2 which is 4 2 times minus x will be minus 2x plus 6 we keep it as it is Everything that has an X, we're going to take it over to the other side. So because we want to solve for X, it needs to move to the left. When it moves over, the sign change. It's negative. So you will have 2X. It's negative. It will be plus 2X equals 4 plus 6. We also move 2 to the other side because it's positive. It will be minus 2X. 2x plus 2x, it's 4x is equals to 4 plus 6 is 10 minus 2, it's 8. Because we're looking for x, not for x, we need to divide by 4. When it is dividing, we multiply. When it's multiplying, we divide to get rid of that. So 4 and 4 cancels out. You are left with x is equals to. 4 goes 1 time into 4 and it goes 2 times into 8. The answer is x is equal to 2. So that should have been your answer. And also with what we're going to be doing now, you will apply the same concept because we're going to be moving things around. OK, so let's go and find out how do we solve the equation. What time does the class end? Oh, we started at 8. Oh, gosh. Oh, at 7. It ends at 8.30. I get lost with the times. Okay. <laughs> so we're still on yes, time. We started at 7. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, now I'm over time. I thought that we started at 6. Okay. So equation of a straight line. So when we have that straight line, remember we have a line that looks like that. So this is our y and this is our x axis and we have our straight line. So this straight line is represented by an equation. And that is what we call the equation of a straight line. 
and in your module, I guess, you use the formula y is equals to b x plus a or a x plus b. Let me see if I have the right values the way you will have it. A plus B X or A or B X plus A or sometimes you write it as Y is equals to A plus B X or Y is equals to B X plus A. Now, what is very important with this is that when you have your equation of a straight line, only the blue letters are actual numbers. Y and X remain as Y and X and we are always going to be solving for Y. So the blue letters always are numbers. So how do we then make or find the equation of a straight line? We can find the equation of a straight line if you are given two points. You can calculate the equation of a straight line. Uh, there are many ways of finding the equation of a straight line, but in BNU you have a formula so we can also based on the example that we're going to be doing uh, we can determine which values of x and y will that be we already it's the same example that we had previously in your module your formula is y minus y1 Divide by x minus x1 is equals to the slope. You can see that the left hand, the right hand side is the same as what we've calculated as a slope, right? Y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And because we want to end up with an equation that looks like this. Therefore, it means every way where we have x1, y1, x2, y2, we are going to substitute it with the actual value and solve the equation by making y the subject of the formula. You remember last time we met, we spoke about the subject of the formula. So previously, we already identified that our x1 and y1 is 0 and 10, and x2, y2 is 5 and 0. So we can go into the formula and substitute. So where we see y1, we put 10. Where we see x1, we put 0. y2, 0 minus 10. x2 minus x1, 5 minus 0. And we have calculated this previously. We, knew, we know that it equals to minus 2. So now this side, on the left hand side, we have y minus 10 divided by x minus 0. So this can also be the same as y minus 10. y minus 10 divided by x because x minus 0 is the same as x equals to minus 2. So we need to solve this. We can take x minus 2 to the other side. Or we can multiply because it's dividing. So because it's dividing, we multiply. So this will be minus 2x. And we will be left with minus 10 on the left. And we want to get rid of minus 2. It is adding when it goes over. Uh, sorry, it's subtracting. When it goes over, it will be positive. So it will be y is equals to minus 2x plus 10. That will be the equation of a straight line. As you can see, our blue are represented by numbers. The x and the y stays as they are. So in terms of this equation as well, if I keep the 0, you're just going to take the x minus 0, multiply it on the other side, Put it in the bracket when you move it over because sometimes this will be a number 
make sure that you move it inside the bracket and then distribute the two minus two into the bracket. So it will be minus two times X is minus two X minus two times zero is zero. And move two to move minus 10 to the other side, it will become positive 10. As you can see, only the blue letters A and B are numbers and Y and X stay as they are. And that's how you will find the equation of a straight line. So let's look at an exercise or an example. Let's do more, one more example. I'm going to use our points. You still remember the points that we used in our example? In our example previously? Which were one and four and four and two. Going to use those ones. Actually, even include a new slide, a blank slide. We have our point one and four and four and two, right? That's what we had. Okay, so if the question is, we need to find the equation of a straight line, we know that the equation of a straight line is y minus y1 divided by x minus x1 is equals to y2 minus y1 divide by x2 minus x1. Now I need to identify this is my x1, y1, x2, y2. It's very important to first do that before you come and substitute into the formula. So our y stays as it is minus our y1. We said it is 4 divide by x. Minus x1, we said it's 1, equals y2 is 2 minus y1, which is 4, over x2, which is 4, minus 1, x1. You are left with y minus 4, divide by x minus 1 and 2 minus 4 is 2 over 3 and it's minus, right? So now you can see that I have x minus 1. So I need to take x minus 1 and multiply it onto this equation that we have here. I'm going to use the next so I'll be left with y minus 4 on the left, and I'm going to multiply 2 over 3 by x minus 1. And solve. Distribute. Distribute. So y minus 4 will be minus 2 times x is minus 2x over 3. Minus times minus is positive. 2 times 1 is 2 over 3. And that is not the end because I need to get rid of minus 4. Minus 4 is subtracting, so it will be y is equal to minus 2 over 3x plus 2 over 3 plus 4. Now I've got a fraction here. I need to solve a fraction. You still, you know, remember, do you know how to solve the fraction? So if I have 2 over 3 plus 4, this is a fraction. I can put it over 1. Because I'm adding, when you add or subtract, 
they need to have common denominator. Since they do not have a common denominator, I'm going to find the common denominator. What will be that value that can three and one divide into and not leave a remainder? It's three. So three is the common denominator. Three goes how many times into three? It goes one time, one times two is two. One goes how many times into three? It goes three times three times four. It's plus 12. Two plus 12, it's 14 over three. That is the answer. And because it is 14 over three, it is a, uh, and then we call this, uh, we call, we call uh, 14 over 3a improper fraction because the value at the top, which is your numerator, is bigger than the value at the bottom, which is called the denominator. And since your denominator is 3, we say 3 goes how many times into the numerator, which is 14, so it goes 3, 6, 9, 12. So it will go four times, and the remainder will be 2. So this will be 4, 2 over 3, because 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 12. And then that will be... The answer that you you will write there. Y is equals to minus two over three x plus four two over three. Or sometimes if you will look at the answer, if the answer they left it as an improper fraction, you can leave it as an improper fraction. Okay, so let's do more exercises that you guys can practice with. Here is your first exercise. Determine the equation of a straight line that passes through this point. I will graciously write you the formula. Y minus Y1 divided by X minus X1 equals Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus. Let me know when you're done. I'll give you five minutes to try it out.
Are you with me? Are we done? Uh. Okay. Ma'am, I'm so busy with the I'll give you more time. Thank you. Um, can you bring up that other screen again, please? Yeah, I'm trying to. Something is stuck on me. Sorry, it kicked me out. I don't know why. No, it's not. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, ma'am. You will let me know when you're done.
And please also remember to complete the register. I will repost it in case we join this session. Right. I'm done. Okay, I'll wait to hear about the others.
I'm done, babe. Okay. I'm done. All right, thank you. Oh, so what is your X1 and Y1? X1, X1 is three. Oh. <laughs> you go, you go, I went to read it. So three is X1. And the minus two is y one, and then five is x two, and minus six is y two. Oh, let's substitute into the formula. So y minus brackets minus two over x minus uh, five mm? no three sorry equals minus six Minus bracket minus two and then over five minus three. Let's solve. I'm done now. <laughs> minus times minus is positive, right? Yeah. That will be y plus three over x minus. Uh -uh. That's two, not three. Equals. Minus six times uh, minus six minus times minus two will be minus six plus two over five minus three. So let's solve the right hand side. Minus six plus two. It's minus four. Five minus three is two. On the left, you are left with y plus two over x minus three. Now we need to get rid of x. X minus three, so we multiply on the left you'll be left with y plus two equals minus four over two times x minus three. Distribute minus four over two. You, we could also already from here solved because two goes one time into two and it goes two times into four, and this would have been left with 
minus two as the answer, right? Because it's minus two. And we distribute two. We distribute minus two into the whole bracket. We have y plus two equals minus two times x is minus two x. Minus two times minus three, it's plus six. We move two to the other side. It will be y is equals to minus two x plus six minus two. Y is equals to minus two x plus six minus two. Is equals to two x minus minus oh. two, which is option four. This is so cringy. No. Okay, but it's fine. At least, and I can see where I went wrong. Okay. So I have another one for you to do. We still have 20 minutes for you. Still have more to do. Wait. Find the equation of a straight line passing through those two points. Y minus Y1 over X minus X1. Like two minus y one over x two minus x one. Let's see if you can get this one up to the end. And let me know when you are done. If you are stuck, also there's no problem with telling me that you are stuck so that we can use the time effectively by me helping you answer the question.
I'm dying and I'm hoping for the best. <laughs> okay. Are you all done? So it seems as if you are all done. We can then do Okay, so our x1 and y1, I'll just write them for us. x1, y1, x2, y2. Who wants to do it? No I'm going to your turn. <laughs> My turn. I just did it earlier. <laughs> okay, okay, Julie, Juliet, come on now. Focus. I'm not going <laughs> to try. I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> okay, so I'll do it for you. Okay, so you will do all if the calculations. If it's not number two, then I don't want to do it. Okay. Um. X minus X1 is minus 2 equals Y2 is 2 minus Y1 of 3 over X2 is minus 3 minus X1 or minus 2. So we'll be having Y minus 3 over x times uh, x minus minus 2 it's x plus 2 minus where do i get the minus from 2 minus 3 over minus 3 minus minus it's positive 2 so we can solve the right hand side. Y minus 3 over X plus 2. On the right hand side. What is 2 minus 1? Oh, sorry, 2 minus 3. Minus 1. It's minus 1. Minus 3. Plus 2 is minus plus two. 1. It's minus one. So this side we can say also it's the same as positive Eight. one. All right? Oh, okay. Minus one divided by minus one will give us one. one. Okay. So the left hand side we will have y minus three equals and then we multiply one, which is the answer we get from minus one divided by minus one. We're going to multiply it with x plus. Two. X plus two and Y minus three. We distribute one, which will be X 
plus two. Take three to the other side. Y is equals to X plus plus two plus, plus three. three. Y, y equals, equals X plus five. So it's number four. I got it right. Four. Okay, I saw where I went wrong. Okay, okay. Okay. All right, so we left with how many more minutes? Because then let's do another one. Okay, which is the last one? Which is the last one? So we also have our X one, Y one, X two, Y two. I will start with the formula x1, y1, sorry, y1, y minus y1, x minus x1 equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. See, if you can get this, I will give you the, the values. Minus seven over x, Minus two equals four minus minus seven over one minus two. Let's see if you can get this one.
I'm done. Okay. You did get the answer. Yes, I got the answer. Must I say which answer I got, ma'am? Yes, you can say. Oh, we can do it together. Okay, let's do it together. Oh, but others done, Juliet and Lizzie. Are you guys done? Yeah. Okay. So after that step, uh, four minus the minus seven in brackets equals to eleven, and one minus two equals minus one. And then, um, then we write down y minus uh, y plus seven, and then on the other side we take x over to eleven. Okay. So we write y plus seven, seven is equal, equal to. to 11, uh, 11, minus, minus 11, 11 yeah. times uh, x minus 2, mm -hmm. which gives us then um, minus 11 plus 22. Then we're taking the 7 over, and because it's a plus, it's going to be a minus on the other side, so it's minus 11x plus 22 minus 7 and then y equals minus 11 plus 15. So the answer is number 2. That's number 2. And that concludes today's session. So I got that one right. <laughs> yes! <laughs> we finally had the threading. No, but it's the minus, some... minus, and the minus, and the minus that I got it. Yeah. Julia, you're very quiet, girl. Are you okay? Okay. Um, so I'm just... good, thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah. Just to recap on what we've done today. Uh, we've learned um, how to draw the straight line on the set of two axes. that when we are given two points, we can draw uh, the straight line. We can also determine the slope of the graph or the, the slope of the line by looking at the line, whether it's positive or it's negative. And we can also calculate the slope. Remember the slope? Is your y2 minus your y1 over your x2 minus x1 gives you the slope and it will also tell you whether the slope is negative or positive. Then we also learned how to find the equation of a straight line by using the formula y minus y1 over x minus x1 equal y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So these are just the basic things that you have learned. So sometimes in your module, they might give you questions in a word format. You just need to read the question carefully and map out your points. So they might give you um, things like if the rent, oh, sorry, uh, uh, they say, a quantity and cost or price. Let's put it price there. Quantity and price. So the quantity will correspond with the price. So if they say, if I buy 200 CDs for 100 rand, therefore my 100 CD will either, they will have told you that which one is your X, which one is your Y, your 100 CDs for 100, 100 rand. And the next one, they say, if they increase, the number of or the quantity to 150 and then the price also increased to 120. You should be able to link that quantity with the price so that you can create your X and Y. So it's not always that you will get questions like this straightforward. 
but they might be a little bit trickier and we can always discuss them um, as and when we get those type of difficulties throughout the sessions. Um, and now I'm going to hand over back to you to tell me what is it that you want us to discuss in detail next week? What is the topic that you for next, not that, not that, for next session? Do you have a topic in mind? Um, or must go for it? We get back to you. <laughs> I know that whatever we did now, <laughs> which is going to do again. <laughs> I've got that one at least. I'm not, just remember uh, the negative and a negative and the positive. The positive and the negative. Just hold on to me. all of those negatives and positives, but the straight line story is in assignment four, guys. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. What, what, what else is in assignment four um, that you guys are struggling with? So, I know. I'm looking at it. Um, so I know, um, Ooh, it it's is, that interest stuff, no, basic it's, financials. It is basic financials, oh. which, is, which is like chapter, okay, the straight line is chapter six, and then the basic financials is chapter seven. So okay. that is uh, our next one, which is due the ninth, which is this coming. Wow. So it tough. changed. You didn't check the date that says the 13th now. Is it? Uh, you guys are just checking. I don't know. I think it's the 13th of September. Well, I'll just check again, but on this um, actual assignment, it says the 9th. Yeah, okay. ma'am, let's do this. Next Interest week. compound stuff, let's do that next week. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we will, we will look at the financial math next week on the 12th. Yes, please. Oh, and that's how to work this calculator? I the no basic idea. is. Are we yeah. looking at the basic financial calculations? That's chapter seven, right? Yes. Because, yeah. Okay. The interest and stuff. Yeah. Because that is in this assignment that is due for, for now. Yes. <laughs> how, many Why? Assignment, how many assignments? Why did they give us that? this option as a subject? What? <laughs> 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 You do a good job. You do a good job, ma'am. You do a good really, job. really, ma'am. You explain yeah, it. Seriously. I love it. Yeah. You know what? Um, for my last, okay, for my for my three assignments so far, right? I've got like sixty five percent, sixty five, and yeah, the other. That's so I'll good. see what I'll do with this one. <laughs> You're gonna pause. Don't worry. We're all gonna pause. In Jesus' name. I, I, I can't afford to do this thing over again. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> and once you're over 45, that's now me talking for myself, right? Times two, times two, times two, girl, times two. I did this back in high school and I got an A, but ask me now, I don't even understand. I dropped it long time ago. I think it was 91 or something like that. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm getting there. For you, because of you, ma'am, I understand when you do it with me. When I do it by myself, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, remember, these are assignments. Assignments are there to help you prepare for your for your exam. So, the more you practice, is the more you get used to this. Um. So you um the time we do your your um financial math, you would have a day before you your closing date if your assignment is due on the 13th. But do not worry because we're working towards you making sure that you pass your exam, right? That's Thank you so much. <laughs> that's the for, the that's my final, goal. final, final end product, which is passing that exam. So <laughs> we will do financial maths. And then the following week, we will continue with the financial maths because I wouldn't have covered everything you will need for financial maths because financial maths includes simple interest, simple discount, uh, compound interest, and annuities. And yes. then, and now then you're speaking amortization. foreign, ma'am. And then amortization. So What's amortization? Yeah, it's part, <laughs> I, I think it's part of your module as well. So you must check. Why? 
uh, I was that's why I asked, I oh, asked how many how many assignments do you guys get this is assignment four that you're talking about talking so about do you still have do you still have assignment five yes ma'am. okay then and probably in I'm your assignment mistaken. yeah in your assignment five it will include annuities and amortization mm. annuities are like payments so if you own a, a, a if you own a house you paying a bond we we do amortization of your bond if oh. you have a car it's like a, we do like it's like interest. a financial statement of your mm. car but here we talk about amortization Oh, wow. uh, if you own a car, you do get this monthly statement that tells you how much you owe, how much you have been paying, all those things. Even on your loan, your ordinary loan, you do get this a financial statement that shows you your transactions per month, the interest paid. So all those things, it's Ooh. the same thing that we will be doing in this. But anyway, I will see you on Monday when we discuss financial <laughs> math <laughs> and compound interest that's what you want yes so we'll ma'am okay. thank All you right. very much thank you. You must have a good Enjoy evening go evening. you, you too, too. Bye. 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 Thank you. bye thank you bye bye girls don't go yet <laughs> <laughs> listen linda is